all for being here. The time is now 534 and we are going to call this meeting to order. It was duly posted as required by state law and we are going to begin with the invocation. Uh, Commissioner Lopez. No, I've got it. He covered me the last. Okay, wonderful. Lord, thank you for the opportunity to serve the people of our city. Help us to act with character and conviction. Help us to listen with understanding and goodwill. Give us a spirit of service. Remind us that we are stewards of your authority. Please guide us so that this meeting will be productive. Let us be effective and decisive. We ask these things as your sons and daughters, confident in your goodness and love. Amen. 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 Now the pledge. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mark, if you will read the conflict of interest for us. Yes, ma'am. Under state law, a conflict of interest exists if a council member or certain members of that person's family have a qualifying financial interest in an agenda item. Members with a conflict of interest cannot participate in the discussion nor vote on the agenda item. Are there any known conflicts of interest to disclose at this time? None. 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 And I will note that uh, Commissioner Mesmar is not present today, but we still do have a quorum. Uh, and moving on to citizen communication, do we have anyone signed up, Amanda? Yes, Mayor, we have two. The first one is Raymond Reyes, 706 Nuntucker Drive, and he would like to be called. I don't know if he's oh, in the audience. Right oh, okay. I made it. I got back. <laughs> okay. So uh, Raymond Reyes, 706 Nuntucker Drive. Um, as, as always, uh, it's, it's been a, a, an interesting past year, looking for uh, good things and better things to come for the city of Harlingen. Um, as we can see, I'm, I'm sure we all keep up to date mostly with what's going on uh, in the political realm of things. There's a lot of changes. Uh, some people thought they had it like that in Washington. Uh, it didn't turn out to be the case. There's other things that are going on locally, the county level, city level, not just here. Uh, but actually throughout the state of Texas. So I think, um, <coughs> as I stated, you know, most entities, municipalities, what have you, want to run things as a corporation. But I think they forget that uh, the citizens uh, are, are, are the ones that are, uh, are the shareholders, if you want to use that analogy. So uh, I think that there definitely has to be oversight. I was uh, recently made aware of certain things in certain counties uh, at that level that again you know the city has staff that ta taxpayers pay for uh, I flipped the bill for my own staff to do the things that we do um, so of course I just want to see positive things happen and stuff uh, there's a lot of uh, you know maybe misappropriation or misuse or people thinking that they got it like that when they got to a certain position but uh, I've always believed, and this is the way I've been brought up, and my family has been always, my, my father mainly, very well politically connected in all aspects, both Republican, Democrat, and Independent, mainly for the type of businesses that he was in for a very long time, 53 years. We owned five gentlemen's clubs in the state of Texas, and you know, I must admit, men of power love the ladies. Um, so I'd just like to make a, a statement that I, I think that if, we move things in the right direction for the right reasons, so the right things are gonna happen. Uh, when we start swaying from that and, and feeling that, that we're entitled and we can do certain things and it's gonna be overlooked because that, that happens a lot. Um, like I've stated before, I, I, I'm here, I do that. Uh, I, you know, Atlanta, Georgia was very glad when I left my business interest because there's a lot of things going on over there. But I just want to enjoy my grandkids. I have five grandkids. I was always gone a lot when my kids were growing up. Uh, Crisscross the globe doing the different interesting things I did uh, on the IT side. But um, I just like to see good things happen. I could basically be anywhere I want on the globe doing what I do 
because I've earned that from the fruits of my labor, but I choose to be here. My grandkids are here. My family established roots here. So I'm not interested in going back to San Antonio. Yes, I still have interests over there, but I want to see the right things happen, not just here, but everywhere for the right reasons uh, and for everything to be looked at correctly and just done correctly, just oversight. Thank you much for your, for your time, guys. Uh, I got to go with this thing. Hasn't stopped since I've been here since 5 o'clock early just to make sure I have a seat. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Mr. Reyes. The next one is Nazar Anula. Anula, or I, I don't know how to pronounce this name, but I think it's An Anula. Kabun Des, maybe? Eh? No. No. Just he wants to be called, right? I don't have a copy of, of, of that. Maybe if you can just um, okay. say the okay. the spelling I, of the last name. It's A-O-U-N-A-L-L-A-H. Is there anyone here present? I don't think so, but let me, would you like to be called? He said yes, so let me give him a call. Is okay. that okay? Hello, is this Nassar? I hate to pronounce your name, sir, because I'm afraid I'm going to pronounce it wrong. But it's, um, can you pronounce your last name, please? Aunala, is this Anala. the city secretary? Yes, sir, this is Amanda Lisondo, and you signed up for Citizens Communication. And I'm going to give you three minutes, sir, and then I'll let you know when to start, okay? okay. You, may, you may start now. Um, first, I'd like to thank uh, Commissioner Tinsley and Commissioner for their service. It's really appreciated and we're glad to have commissioners like you. Um, I just like to talk about uh, agenda item 11. As a citizen, I don't know what it's about. Uh, as you know, commissioners and mayor, uh, an agenda item has to have the subject for what it's for. It has to be noticed. Uh, this doesn't have the subject for what it's for on anything on agenda item 11. And I think that it's improper and it should be re-noticed with the subject matter for a later city commission meeting. That is all. Thank you. You have, Thank a, you. You have a good evening, sir. That's it, ma'am. Thank you. That concludes citizen communication. Um, and we are going to move on to the presentation of the recognition certificates. And so we do have some for Mr. Fidel Espinosa, Felix, Felix Sierra, Vicente Rodriguez, and Olive. Berio Ocuña, if you can please step forward. Thank you. 
proudly congratulates you. He placed third on the gravel truck, Texas Public Works Association, the Rio Grande Valley Annual Equipment Rodeo. Rodeo? <laughs> We're going to fix that. <laughs> Competition for an outstanding performance. And this was in Edinburgh, Texas on December 10, 2022. Um, and this is for Mr. Felix Espinosa. That is. <laughs> okay, and um, this one is for Felix Sia. And on this um, place, second for the mini excavator at the Texas Public Works Association Rio Grande Valley Annual Equipment Rodeo competition for an outstanding performance. And he was also recognized oh, on December 10, 2022. Okay. She's I had the time. <laughs> and the director for public It's, um, it's a uh, play on words. It's road and ale. Oh, okay. Yeah. Like a drive. Recognition award um, is for Mr. Oliverio Acuña. Um, the city proudly uh, congratulates you as well. Place third for the mini excavator at the Texas Public Works Association Rio Grande Valley Annual Equipment Road Rodeo. 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 <laughs> Competition for an outstanding <laughs> performance. Right. We are going to take things a little bit out of order. Um, so at this time, I'd like to move to item 11, um, executive session to for consultation with legal counsel pursuant to government code 551.071 regarding pending litigation. Um, item 11B, consultation with legal counsel pursuant to Texas government code 551.0712 to receive attorney-client consultation protected by the attorney-client communication, which is privileged 
and um, 11C, consultation with legal counsel pursuant to Texas Government Code 551.0712 to receive attorney-client consultation, also protected by the attorney-client communications privilege. And so do we have a motion to go into executive session? Motion. Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Ladies and gentlemen, we are going to go into executive session and we will be back out just as soon as we can. Thank you for your patience. Time is now 7.04 and we are out of executive session. Thank you ladies and gentlemen for your patience. And we are gonna move right along to item two, approval of minutes, um, the regular meeting of September 21st, 2022. Make a motion to approve the most recent version. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Item three, we have consent agenda. Um, items three A through C. Do we have a motion or is there any motion. issues? Second. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Moving on to new business, we have item number four, presentation by the UTRGV on our community surveys. Uh, Mayor Ron Garza from UT RGV is here and is going to uh, make a presentation on the results of the community survey that we had. Ron? Thank you so much for your patience. I appreciate you. Sure, absolutely. Um, good evening, uh, Mayor and Commission members. Uh, again, my name is Ron Garza. I work for UT RGV. Uh, and I'm going to kind of go through some of the, uh, I'll give you some context, give you some context of the response. Uh, it, it's, it's a lot of information that I have, but I'm definitely condensing it down. So I probably have about 15, 20 minutes of content that I'll try to move swiftly through. But any, anything, in any area that you want to go through the results, just, just stop me. So let's see. Probably clicking the wrong button. There we go. So let me give you a little context. Uh, again, I oversee the uh, UTRGVs, what's called the Office of Workforce and Economic Development. Uh, it's, it's, it's multifaceted. Uh, it's a part, it, it's, it's kind of been redesigned. I've only actually been with the university since March, but I do want to give you the context that I'm a previous city manager. I was previous city manager for a few years with Edinburgh. And then previous to that, five years as executive director of uh, the Council of Governments, local uh, LRGVDC. So have a lot of context and knowledge with working with different cities. So, you know, not only from the data perspective, we, we, have, um, we have what's called the Data and Information System Center. So I have uh, analytics professionals that really help flush this out. But then after all that was done, uh, I put on my city manager hat and my, my COG director hat because I'm genuinely, you know, wanted to take this information and, and what's the best you could take from this because you know, after the assessment is done, what's the action that you want to do with this? So uh, I take that really personally. But uh, before I get started, I do want to put that in there to remind happy 2023, everybody. And it goes without saying that you know, the city of Harlingen is extremely important to the region, the Rio Grande Valley. And then the strategic positioning that it has with UTRGV and the growth that's happening uh, is just tremendous. And I, I always say this because you know, universities are, are these, you know, organizations that sometimes the knowledge of what's there, you might not know the throughput and the output. So I, I welcome you guys to any time that you get want to get more, you know, immersed with what UTRGV does as to the region, but more specifically in the city of Harlingen. I, I think that's really important. So I always invite, uh, after I leave here, I have copies of this presentation on my business card with my cell phone. So I always want to serve as a resource for, for any of you. Uh, so, you know, in May, after, you know, the mayor uh, took the seat, uh, she, she approached us about doing a community uh, survey and really wanting to, to get the voice of the residents. And, you know, th that, that really excited me, something that I had done when I was with the city manager of the city of Edinburgh. And it, it's, it has so many benefits, so many benefits. Uh, these are just a few. 
but you know the list goes on and on and on it really truly you know displays transparency but it really helps shape some things that will go into you shaping policy developing policy action planning things like that so um, want to talk real quick about the methodology before I jump into the results so survey response period was open for about 112 days uh, so a long period of time but 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 a healthy period and respondents could do surveys uh, via online or they could do it written but June 30th it was it was uh, kicked off at the town hall meeting uh, and then a series of those five public engagement uh, sessions which I'll, I'll get to that in just a bit 584 surveys were returned um, so all all the analytics professors uh, that that we work with say that the act that's actually a high 95% confidence interval so the the cross section sh would we have liked more of course uh, but surveys sometimes don't get a cross section of, of a total population but there was some interesting dynamics to to your particular survey one thing that was really interesting I think one of the most interesting um, with single member districts here is that you had almost equal representation of respondents from each district uh, that is that is the percentage of people that responded across each district, which is pretty It's just kind of a, a almost an anomaly there that, that's phenomenal and really that goes because of the public engagement <clears throat> the, the robust public engagement process that you did as part of this was the most valuable part of this and You should be really commended for that and I you know this I'm kind of jumping to a recommendation but doing this in some form or fashion in somewhat of a routine basis is really a big takeaway that you want to take from this um, you know because number one it, it really immersed yourselves into community gave them a voice but then also allowed again it just just the way that <coughs> translated into equal <coughs> respondents is really really interesting and that would have there's no way that would have happened without actually spending the time to do the listening sessions across the city so that that's amazing and then, you know, one thing that, that doesn't really come out of the results, that's also a very vital part of the process, uh, and me and Mr. Gonzalez have talked about this, is that during these listening sessions, so many resident issues or questions came about organically, and they were addressed on the spot. So there's already been, you know, services and actionable items that have happened just, again, organically through having your ear into the community. And again, those, those are takeaways that, that are absolutely invaluable. So uh, I do want to cover a couple of, of kind of considerations because surveys are very interesting. Um, you know, it's hard not to fixate on certain dynamics or, you know, take certain things, you know, uh, personally or, or, or heavily weighted. But uh, that, that's why I put that kind of quote there. But the doing sometimes is more important than the outcome. So you, you're already getting a, a big leg up on there. So you're in the discovery learn phase. So we discovered, we assessed, we learned about what the community wants, and now it's acting and adjusting. Uh, and one thing do, I do want to stress, because even though there had been other similar efforts through the years in the city, nothing like this in this format. So whatever you do moving forward, 2022 should be the baseline. So. Uh, this should be the baseline that other efforts of public engagement should be compared to. Um, and there's, there's a, you know, you, this was kind of my role in this process, but extracting the signal from the noise of the respondents, you know, that, that's something that I did. So kind of getting to the results. So if I had to take this holistically, in, in, and again, surveys are, are, are very interesting with community uh, municipal surveys, but if I had to rate this in one word, I would say Harlingen's results kind of were on the neutral line. And I'll, I'll, I'll get into what that means. But overall, that is where the results fell. So most of all the responses happened from a one to, to five scale. So very dissatisfied, very satisfied. And a lot of other cities, you know, uh, you could look across the nation at results of community surveys like that. They're very polarizing. You get a lot of negative comments you know of, of, of things and you get a lot of positives the trend as a whole center lined with your respondents so and and there's a lot of reasons for that and you'll see the categories of why 
but I, wa I wanted to kind of provide that context. So what I did was, um, instead of giving you charts and graphs, we're gonna kind of go category by category and give you a, I put them as a gray, green, and gray, gray, green, gray, and red, but I, I believe somebody had some issues with some colors. So, <laughs> so what I did, I, I accommodated for that, so, and thank you, Mr. Gonzalez, for telling me that. <laughs> so uh, you'll see at the beginning, it, it says green or red. And, and <laughs> what that is, so green is, and in small print there, you'll see 3.5 and 2.6. And again, one or zero, to five, you could see that, that you had kind of that center line. So what I did is I looked at the trend as a whole and took what I ranked as a complement concern or if they're gray and some categories have gray, I still gave, it, gave you the highest and lowest even though they weren't heavy outliers. They were more right in the middle. So we'll go through some of these and, and I think it'll make better sense. So city services, um, uh, complements, fire services, city library, and emergency medical services. And I understand, you know, I, I, I know obviously that the city does not administer emergency mer medical services themselves. And something to also consider when you're looking at results of surveys is that the definition of what that question is, the person responding is defining it for themselves. So they don't necessarily have the context or sometimes even care of who's doing it, what does that mean to me, they're, they're interpreting it as they're reading it. And as you'll see in one of the categories, there's so many things that cities don't actually administer that the accountability or the visual accountability still, residents still think it falls on the city's laps. So, um, and then the concerns, stormwater management and street maintenance. There's, there's absolutely no way that that's an outlier to any city's surveys, uh, especially in the Rio Grande Valley with, the, with the being the conveyance of a basin, Stormwater management, drainage is always going to be primary concern. But street maintenance, you know, so there's nothing that, from a concern, that stood out. Uh, Complement, it is interesting that, you know, uh, something to, to take away from. Fire services from the nature of response and then the library. So obviously the, the respondents thought that the library was definitely an asset to the city. So something, something interesting there. And anybody just please jump in if there's, I'll go through these pretty swiftly, but if there's something to... Uh, to discuss or question, please let me know. So perception of the city. So this was essentially asked, what do you perceive the city, you know? And of all the responses, those that, that were genuine compliments was Harlingen was regarded as a good place to retire, good place to raise children, and a good place to live. So again, stood above the 3.5 scale. And the concern, uh, which I, I addressed this in, in, a, in a recommendation, was a place to start a business. So, but I think there's a lot of positive things happening already that this I'm qualifying as kind of a low hanging fruit because this is something that I think this, the, the, the community here is going to really gravitate to the activity that you're doing and gonna continue to do there. Any questions? I'll keep going. So these city maintenance, <clears throat> so this as you'll see has gray remarks on both. And so I gave you the highest and the lowest remarks, but they're gray because they weren't statistically, you know, compliments and they weren't statistically concerned. They were still the highest and lowest, but in a, in a much more condensed scale. But again, you know, so if somebody, another way to interpret that, if somebody had something nice to say, they're saying the traffic signals and the traffic flow is, is, is good in the city. Um, and then lowest was street lighting, sidewalks and streets, which, Honestly, that doesn't surprise, uh, that actually surprised me that that wouldn't fall into the red category because people are really polarized around that topic. Uh, public safety, uh, again, fire, fire personnel and response uh, came out as a compliment and uh, the service from operators in the 911 call center was actually a, a compliment as well. And I, I know the city doesn't administer that service, but again, people don't, holistically don't separate that. And then uh, even though it was gray and not really a concern, uh, the lowest remark in that category was animal control services. Uh, feelings of safety. So a compliment was uh, the feeling of being safe during the daytime in neighborhoods. 
uh, and then a concern was downtown after dark and traveling by bicycle. Um, so again, that means whatever that respondent qualified that as. So, but again, those are, those are good outliers to take some good action planning from. Uh, code enforcement uh, wasn't necessarily a compliment, but the highest uh, remark was the general neighborhood, you know, favorable neighborhood cleanliness. And one concern stood out was degree to which code violations are an issue. And this one, I, I, I always feel kind of strongly on the code enforcement one because people never have kind of that circle of, if somebody has a code enforcement complaint, it's really hard for them to know what the resolution was. Like there's no circle of closure to that. And there's different ways cities can address that, but you know, people see things all the time because obviously cities have a lot of dynamics to code enforcement, but closing that loop I think is gonna be important in the future. Uh, utility services, uh, the next categories again, we get more towards the center line. Uh, highest remark, wastewater, and then one concern, drainage infrastructure, but again, that is not surprising at all. Parks and recreation, again, a lot of the responses and categories were center line there. But just showing again the highest and the lowest remark was uh, the number and quality of city parks. So again, a favorable response to people felt very favorable about the number and the quality of our city parks here in Harlingen. And then the lowest remark is the, the quantity of adult sports and recreation programs. So communication, uh, again, not really a compliment here, but the, the highest remark was the city website. Uh, and then one concern is uh, two of them that stood out were transparency of city government and public involvement in local decision making. I cut it short there a little bit. But again, th you know, there, there's a lot of generalization to transparency of government. You know, and that boils down, and we'll get into this in the, in the recommendations, but really around communication. The general community does not communicate like government communicates. So that having that disconnect and having a robust strategy around that is really going to be a big takeaway. Uh, development services, again, very center-lined. Uh, highest remark, uh, building inspection, lowest remark, communication during the development process. Basically, how to navigate through that development process. Education, again, very center line, quality and condition of local schools. This is the last category, which is really interesting. And I'm calling this a bit of a deviation, but I kind of want to get into to why. So the highest remark was still very low, but there was a lot of devi deviations of the concerns. So what I mean by that is there was a lot in the red category with this, this area. So, uh, and it is a deviation of services. And if you look at that list, so all of these things were, are in red and they were all rated as really low, really poor. But again, just analyzing those, all of those services, if not almost 100%, are services that the cities do not, there, there's a lot of reasons behind this. Number one, the cities don't administer this. And then these are networks of um, community services that people have to navigate. And all of these are defined by eligibility criteria. So not everybody receives this. So people sometimes can't find these services, are not aware of these services, and sometimes do not qualify for these services. So, you know, the information is, is as it lies, but I, I definitely want to put a big asterisk to this. this uh, um, but again, communication can kind of solve this. I'm going to whip through these before I get to the recommendations, but just gives you some uh, demographics of the respondents. So of all the nearly 600 people that responded, these were uh, the respondents. The age, uh, 35 to 44. Uh, gender was, uh, you know, almost half there, but 3763, male, female. Uh, males in red on the left-hand side and females in blue on the, on the right-hand side. Uh, race, ethnicity, 67% uh, Hispanic, uh, almost 30% white. Uh, household income was uh, generally the highest category was uh, uh, 35,000 to 75,000. Um, and education, uh, the highest category was bachelor's degree. So something 
that translates to all those demographics of, you know, I want you to kind of take a look at this slide, but everybody that responded in the past 12 months participated in these activities. So almost 90%, so almost all 600 of those had been to a park, uh, half of them had been to the library, about half of them had been to a cultural events center. Um, a very high percentage uh, ride bicycles, so the bike pit aspect to the city is strong. Uh, but then you go all the way through this and then you look at like the permit or inspections through city, which some of this is the business community, uh, is really low to the respondents. So this can correlate back to why this group of people that responded think maybe this isn't a good place to start a business. Because this is kind of showing these aren't the same people that are starting businesses. So only 9% of this 600 population actually did that. And then only 2% uh, ride the bus. So in a nutshell of who responded, it, it's really center lined again towards your general middle class engaged public are the people who responded. So um, it just, you know, you look at things like the computer and housing. So out of everybody that responded, 83% actually own a home here. Um, almost 100%, if you look at that, have access to computer. So those that live in poverty and then maybe disconnected from city services did not respond to this. So there's definitely an opportunity with future public engagement to make kind of deliberate points to try to penetrate you know, saturate different markets of people that didn't respond. Um, this was just another snapshot that we were able to extract and how they contact the city. Uh, but uh, o over half of the people that responded, so generally about 300 people, uh, had contacted the city for something over the past year. And about 81% of them, or 81.5, uh, do it via phone. And then, you know, again, kind of center lined, about 31 percent found it what they defined as somewhat easy to get their issue resolved. So again, this also goes to show that these 600 people are very engaged residents of the city of Harlingen. So that their voice coming out was is, is not a surprise. So it's it's a very active voice and it's a good it's a good um, indicator. So so recommendations after looking at it from from the lenses that we have. Um, I do want to share a few of these. So I, I really think doing this either annually, annually is the most you know, probable, but some version, not, maybe not so much a survey, but the public engagement piece was so valuable. And there's other cities that do this, and your timing was almost correlated with this, but potentially maybe doing this as part of the city's budget process. I think that's uh, that that's something that you may want to consider in the future. I know I had shared with Mr. Gonzalez that City of San Antonio they have something called SA Speak Up, and very very similar in terms of the public engagement, but they align it directly with the budget process. So same period, about 60, 90 days, and if you just shifted that a little bit, it align, you know, so that you have a very deliberate, you know, engagement part, so the residents feel good about when the city budget is passed they had a voice into that. So definitely something to potentially consider that. So the other thing, and again, this is, this is my perspective, but I call this kind of a, you could put all this into two buckets. Uh, one bucket is something that is what I call continuous quality improvement. Uh, you know, when I work with elected officials, I, I tell them, uh, never say that that drainage project is gonna fix this. In the Rio Grande Valley, you don't fix drainage. You just <laughs> improve it. That project just helps move the notch on improving something that we're just part of the region. So drainage, streets, sidewalks, and parks, those are always going to be priorities of the city, priorities of the residents, and you're always going to be having to improve them. So the perception of those, it can always get better. So that's where the, the uh, communication of what you're doing in those areas become really important. The low hanging fruit is kind of the opposite end of things that I extracted from the survey results uh, are things that you could really have actionable, tangible things that I think people can see. And you're already doing a lot of this, but the three that really stand out are, you know, around the small business, small business and, and the business, you know, friendly environment. You know, downtown came up 
you know, about safety and things like that and, and being robust. So, so doing, you know, some robust things around uh, downtown district and then bike ped. You know, this is a very bike friendly community. And I think people only responded and that only came out a few times because it's a very active bike community. So if it's active and if you have a, a, a high population segment like bicyclists, they want more of it. So 35% of all respondents that actually use bicycles to travel the city, that's really high. So there, there's an opportunity there. So all of this really boils down to that bucket. And I know this is something you're working on, uh, but administering a structured, robust public communication strategy, I, I cannot say that enough. And you know, we're in a TikTok world that 60 seconds is the limit of people's attention so how do we translate everything that happens here into 60 seconds routinely? That's the challenge. And there's obviously there's a lot of models out there to look at, but, but that is going to be the biggest takeaway and the biggest thing that I think can, can really be a tangible difference. So uh, implement data-driven decision as much as possible. That, that's, you know. And then something that, that I almost put a question mark here but uh, I know you're doing a lot of this with the committees, but if you wanted to take some of these results and actually do actionable committees to say like bike ped or downtown, or I know you're doing it already with small business, but taking that as a focus committee um, that has an external public engagement piece to it is really important. You know, again, back to the drainage streets and sidewalks. Those are so, drainage especially, it's such a technical process that having public engaged in the planning of that is difficult. But the other thing, small business downtown district bike ped, that's a, a great opportunity. Those, those quality improvement areas, drainage sidewalk streets, I think the key there is communicating what you're actually doing in that area. So uh, I know when I was with the city of Edinburgh, we started a dashboard just around all capital projects where people could see the actual progress of every you know, we had a little kind of a scale that, you know, we should be 50% done. Well, we're 38% done, but, the, you know, but there's ways to do this. Uh, implementing, you know, a, a modified 311 call center, you know, things like that, where people have that feedback loop. There's all kinds of ways you can do this. And, and really, there's all, the best news is there's all kinds of ways you can attack some of these things without spending resources and money. A lot of the resources are already in place. It's just reframing some of the services that you, that you do. So um, I believe that's it. Uh, again, that, that's my cell phone. And, and I'm, again, with, with aspects to my perspective on the region, I'm, I'm really vested in helping any way I can. So I want to be a resource to all of you, to, to our city manager, mayor, and commissioners, and, and anything I can do here. And, and if any of you, you know, this is a robust, it's almost more of a workshop. So if any of you want to really dive into some of the weeds on this, I, I you know, welcome sitting one-on-one -on -one with you if, if that's the aspect you ever want to do. I, I had a question. Of course. Because um, I know this is a city as a city as a whole, but were you able to break it down by district or no? So not as accurately as, so you can't take the same topics and the, the, same, the same results and how they're fared comparatively. There are some marks that I can continue to extract, and, and the mayor asked the same thing. Basically, how can I see some of the same topics? Uh, I still need to flush that out. I don't know if they're going to be valid points, but I'll continue to do that. And if there's things that come out comparatively to the five single-member districts, uh, I'll give you some of that. But I, I don't think it's going to yield anything. Like, like it wouldn't be like, a, like there's nothing where I could be like, hey, these are the people that from, these are the respondents from District 5, and according to them, this is what they felt was necessary from their district. If you had more outliers holistically, if, if again, back to the fact that so, as a whole, so many of the trend came to the center line, it's really hard to pull. If, if the, the responses were really polarized, good and bad, then cross-sectioning that, I could then pull out where all the bad ones were compared to the five and where all the good ones were. But that center line really neutralized some of the data. That's why I said the results were kind of neutral. No, but like, I'm not, I'm not sure if I'm understanding. But what I'm asking is like, 
because I know I think part of the survey because when I, we were looking at it was like the uh, people would put their district that they were from right yeah so like is there a way to just pull out the people that were specifically from like say district 5 and just look at their results only and we not can, compare them to everybody else so we can do that like that but it'll look almost exactly as all of them okay. but if you want it when I do the final report because this was just the presentation I wanted to put it in a digestible format but I can break it down like that we can break it out like that, but it's going to look, all five will look very similar in terms of the trends. But, but for the report side, we'll, we'll divvy it up for the five. Any other questions or any other? No, just a, a comment from you. Sure, probably. of course. And, and just thank you so much, Ron, for <coughs> partnering with us in, in doing this. It was, it was helpful to have you kind of guide us on, on how to get this um, implemented and, and process behind it so we do appreciate it um, we appreciate UTRGV obviously and we do hopefully and can, can implement something annually just to keep it to keep it going but I know that is something <coughs> that the commissioners will probably be interested in to know what's going on in their specific uh, and hopefully it is what you say that um, it's pretty neutral and it seems like this is, and I just one, I guess I do have one question. Okay. Going back to the small sample size, you said that that is typical or is Like how much, high? how many did Edinburgh get? Uh, that was about 1,800. But Population is over 100,000. Right. So correlating to number of households, things like that. Um, you know, so again, surveys are just one tool. So extracting back and looking at the whole process of a, as a whole and kind of back to the question of how do they differentiate between the five, I'd go back to the listening sessions and the topics that were brought there. Mm -hmm. And that could definitely be a takeaway that looking forward, you know, to next year or you know, however you want to design this, extracting it at those points as touch points like so instead of having <coughs> it as that whole thing kind of doing snapshots of window around okay this is your district's opportunity to provide comment like and, and that was that was and I know part of the strategy was getting more respondents but you know we've all done surveys and if you have six months to do it you're probably going to do it the last week that of the six months so you almost got to tighten up that window to create a sense of urgency and say okay this is your chance, you know, and, and so, so things like that. But uh, there's ways to tailor it around. But I really loved uh, those individual listening sessions. And I know that was a huge commitment. And do you think, because I know this is something that I heard from, because I was encouraging a lot of my um, constituents from, D, from District 5 to, like, take the survey. But one of the things that they, uh, you know, I cons consistently heard was, that it's too long, it's too long. I feel like I'm doing the homework. It's too long. It's too long. So do you think that if it was maybe shorter, it would, would have probably had a little bit more success? I, I do. I do. So that, that survey was modeled after the Edinburgh one. Uh, I think moving forward, there's some, there's some tailoring to Harlingen that could be a little bit different. Uh, but I do. It, it was robust. It, it, it was. Um, so, you know, me, myself, I would have, I would have tailored that down. So... But uh, moving forward, that was, that was just another takeaway. But doing, there, there's other tools now, technology, even social media style um, interactive surveys that generate so much more immediate feedback. And you know, they're, they're, they're not costly, and there's, there's, la there's less analytics, really. So, and I'll, I'll you know, again, I'll, I'll continue to work with uh, City Manager Gonzalez here to, <laughs> to find some of those tools, but again, you can't overstate enough how important it was, and I think the biggest, one of the biggest messages to the community here is the commitment that you put to putting the ear out to the community. Um, I, I haven't seen something that robust since, I used to work for the city of San Antonio at a point, and, and they do it like that. But, I mean, you, know, you, you took a great cross-section of the, of the city. Uh, without that, again, it would have been interesting to see how the, you know, the diversity of, of respondents between council district, uh, w commission district would have been. So. You know, what I thought was really interesting is I tried to make as many of the sessions. I think I went to, I think I went to all of them except for maybe um, district two and I had another commitment, but 
District 1 um, had a, a really, I think it was like full house, right? And the people wanting to come in, they couldn't come in. And then there was <coughs> less in District 5, and I live in District 5, and so I, I'm familiar with, with <coughs> the area, and I felt like people that were in District 5 um, still participated with the with the survey because it was almost across the board equal yeah um, and that says a lot for district five that you know they're engaged even though they weren't in as much I mean there were people in attendance but not nearly as much as in district one but you saw this the response from the survey almost equal and I think it's because of there's lots of engagement in in that in that district and, and board has been doing a great job but at that point we had just come on and Commissioner Pettis had, has already been on social media for I don't know before we got we, before we got here so I think that translates into what you're saying yeah. that that online presence and that 60 seconds that they went ahead and, and participated in the survey because they had already been engaged with the community in that district so yeah. I think that it's it's when it's, I say back to the question that you had relating to that when I say a baseline I think this is good information to condense and retool a survey knowing so some of the things that we know you know priority wise drainage street like y you know th those are almost easy to identify mm -hmm. but then having this as a baseline lets you really kind of tweak it uh, for the future so but I think it would be streamlined but based on the, some of the data that you already have so you did kind of lay such a great foundation with it. Yeah. Well, again, you know, any way I can serve as a resource, uh, you know, I, I'm working very closely, you know, with Beverly and the EDC and things that we're doing there in, in the small business community. You know, we, the Office of Workforce and Economic Development, we administer the SBDC, Small Business Development Center, comes out of there, all the data analytics, commercialization, all the, so, I mean, there, there's, a, there's a lot we can definitely, uh, help improve or communicate what you're actually doing. But, you know, I know the takeaways from this kind of personally is just the lack of awareness of how much actually goes on here. That's, that's the number one thing that's a tangible action. And that goes back to the communication strategy. Um, you know, we played with this different ways in Edinburgh, but something that I, I, I told uh, uh, Mr. Gonzalez here is, I don't know if any of you have seen uh, Commissioner David Fuente uh, from Hidalgo County so every Friday he puts out a one minute summary of the week and it's a one minute pre-produced uh, and, and our teams work together when I was still city manager and they, he kind of, I love that model. I, I just love it because it's easy, it's pre-produced and you can use it as an archiving but it's, you know, how do you take everything that you did or all the highlights of the week, put it in 60 seconds on a routine basis. I think that, you know, that type of format is an easy. What's the name? Uh, the, so that uh, Hidalgo County Commissioner <coughs> David Fuentes. You can go to his social media, and I think it's on Fridays. But every Friday he puts out a 60, and he calls it like the one minute something. It's pre-produced. You know, it's not interview style. So it's just you're just throwing the facts and you're showing pictures of what you're saying. So, but that type of model, um, again, 60 seconds is about the attention span that, that people can tolerate now. So. But again, thank you. I appreciate the time. And again, if any of you want to follow up deeper into any of the results and as I can flush out more of the uh, individual district responses, please don't hesitate to call me. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you so much. All right. Item five, consideration and possible action to approve a resolution authorizing the city manager to submit a grant application to the Building Resilient Infrastructure and Communities 2022 grant program. Good evening, Mayor, Commission. Craig Cook, Assistant City Manager. Uh, Hollis and Rutledge, our grant writers, uh, have submitted two projects, two drainage projects for BRIC this year, Adams Crossing and Fair Park. About a million two of construction. We've already spent 75,000 of ARPA money for the design, so they are in design. Should be finished in a few months. Probably about the same time we here, whether we're successful on the BRIC grant or not, uh, we'll have them designed. Uh, and there is a, a requirement for a 25% city share commitment, about $300,000, uh, and that's what we're asking 
uh, for tonight. Motion that'll, to approve. That'll be funded out of the ARPA funds. Yes. Second. Uh, Second. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Craig. Thank you. Item six, consideration and, and consideration and take action to approve the selection of TDSI under RFQ number 2023-05 Professional Engineering Services for Street Lighting and Traffic Signal Projects to provide engineering services to the to design the Texas Department of Transportation Dixieland Road Street Safety Lighting Project and Traffic Signals at two intersections of West Spur 54. Thank you. Greg Cook, Assistant City Manager. Uh, we talked about this project uh, a couple of meetings ago. Uh, the City of Harlingen has been awarded construction funds from TxDOT under their HISP, uh, uh, I think is the acronym, program. Uh, we're going to be putting 25 street lights along Garrett, uh, sorry, along Dixieland Road from Garrett Road to Rangerville. Mm -hmm. uh, and about the same time, we have identified two intersections of Spur 54 where traffic signals would be appropriate. Uh, all of that work requires transportation experts, uh, engineers, to design. We talked about our drainage uh, design master service agreements at the last meeting when the commission uh, rightly pointed out we should probably re uh, solicit uh, qualification packages for our drainage people, uh, our drainage engineers. This is transportation. Uh, different skill set, different type of engineer. Companies typically have a water department and a transportation department. So even though we have dealt with TEDSI before in their water group, uh, this, is, uh, this work will be done by their transportation group. We submitted a request for qualifications uh, a few months ago, we got one submission from TEDSI, from their transportation people. They have extensive experience in both street lighting uh, and traffic signaling, so uh, they scored pretty well, as you can see from the uh, executive summary. Uh, Eric Dietrich, who is the pro uh, project manager from TEDSI, is here tonight. Um, so this will be uh, a master service agreement for transportation design work and, and we have two projects the Dixieland project must be done first because that's we have a time frame uh, issue that needs to be let in August so it needs to be finished the design needs to be finished in June so we need to get him working on that uh, like February 2nd because I'll be bringing his his fee proposal to you on February 1st for approval so uh, we're eager to start that and as that design finishes then we will issue uh, a, a request for a proposal for their design fee for the two intersections so that's that's later on but under the same master service agreement motion to approve oh I'm sorry motion to yeah motion to approve Second. all those in favor say aye aye opposed Motion carries. Thank you, Craig. Thank you. I'll see you February 1st with their design fee. <laughs> sure, I'll see you before then. <laughs> Item 7, uh, public hearing to consider an ordinance on first reading to amend the City of Harlingen Vision 2020 Comprehensive Plan, Long Range uh, Thoroughfare Plan by downgrading FM 509 from US 281 to FM 508 from a freeway to a mine. Uh, okay, well. Um, We're going to table this item yes, here. Yes, sorry about that. And. Yes. Um, do we have a motion to table? There are some issues that we need to um, flesh out before we move forward. Motion to table. Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. And this is now tabled. So moving on to item number eight, consideration and possible action to approve a resolution in support of the project with Mammon Realty <coughs> Incorporation to build a 60-unit apartment complex known as the Pendleton Square Affordable Rental Housing Apartments at NEC of Doctors Memorial Drive and Medical Drive, Vermont Avenue. Okay. Um, Mayor, members of the commission, um, with us here tonight is Jeff Beckler with Zimmerman Properties. He's with the development group. and. Connie De La Garza, who's a realtor in the project. Uh, back in 2018, we passed a resolution for the same project uh, 
they were applying for tax credits. Obviously, the tax credits were not awarded. They're here again. Um, they've actually purchased the property this time uh, to build, I believe, 80 units. Is that correct? 88, 88 units. Um, hopefully, with tax credit projects get awarded. So this is merely a resolution uh, supporting the project and saying that we would uh, contribute uh, $500 uh, in kind or in reduced fees to the project. Uh, probably going to be in kind uh, on the city. That way we don't have to uh, give, give them back any money. Um, anything you want to add to that? Uh, staff is recommending approval, by the way. I just wanted to say thank you. My name is Jeff Beckler with Zero Properties. And, uh, not only 2018, this will actually be the fourth time um, I've been before council here to, um, to try to get this pushed through at the state level. And I just, I, I, I I've been down here this, again. This will be the fourth time. I really enjoy Harlingen, and the housing is is much needed. And um, I just want to be, I just want to help in, in in providing that. It's a very competitive process, and um, I don't want to take up too much of your time. But we are trying to do even more units this time to to get some more housing for the city. And um, I just appreciate your consideration. And if you have any questions, I, I don't want to take up too much of your time, but um, I do appreciate uh, uh, you guys hearing me, and again, thank you. And if you have any questions, just let me know. Well, best of luck to you. Hopefully, this time it it, it works out in your favor. So, thank luck you. to you and to Mr. Uh, Delegarza there. Do we have any questions? Well, I'll make the motion. Just to one question. Yeah. What is a holdup? Where is a bottleneck? It's. It's in a nutshell. It, it, the the state agency in Austin divvies out these tax credits. Um, each state has their own process on how they do that. The fact of the matter is it's it's probably the most competitive thing I've ever done. I've played sports my whole life. It's unbelievably competitive. Um, one point can take you from being being able to move forward to you're you're done for this year. Um, so that, that's the short answer. It's, it's really competitive. I've been so close before on this development. Um, and that it's a point driven system. And so Harlingen competes with McAllen, Laredo, Edinburgh, uh, Brownsville. And so it's all location driven in one, one site on this side of the street beats this side of the street. It comes down to inches and each year they change their rules slightly. So each year, you know, you may be sitting pretty one year, they change a point system and the next year you might not be as competitive. So I hope that answers your question. I mean, it, it really just comes down to location, competitive nature of the program and the way Austin draws up <coughs> a point system um, that they put in their guidelines that Governor Abbott signs. And um, it, it's just, it's a wild west competition yeah yeah more, more specifically if i may my name's connie that i and i represent this is this is uh jeff beckner vice president of zimmerman properties in, in springfield missouri to answer your question specifically there's only 66 awards going to be given statewide the state's divided into 13 districts so we're in district 11 and and throughout the state, there's only going to be 66. So we're competing against Dallas, San Antonio. One, the last three years, it, I think it was McAllen that beat us one time. Donna beat us one time. I and, wonder why. Yeah. And he's a specialist at it. I know. And that's what it is. And the location is very important. Our location is, is number one for Harlingen. And I, we feel good that we're going to get it this year. But it's on a competition basis. That's all it is. They give you points for where it is, what's near it, what's across the street, how's where's the nearest HEB store in Texas, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I hope that answers it. But staff recommended it be accepted, so I hope we have a vote and a, and a motion, a second, a good vote. Thank you. <laughs> We're happy Thank to you. support you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. So I'll make the motion to approve. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Yes, sir. Thank you. Let's see. I lost my. 
Item uh, 9, public hearing regarding a proposed tax abatement agreement with SOG Properties pursuant to the Texas Property Tax Abatement Texas Tax Code, Section 312. Um, did you want to speak on it, uh, Mark, or are we just opening this um, up to a just public? To, just to, I can summarize it, and then you can open it up to the floor, Mayor. Okay. Um, basically, this is a tax abatement agreement with SOG Properties. Uh, it involves uh, a 15-acre track that was formerly outside the city limits, and the, the SOG properties has agreed to voluntary annexation because they weren't previously on the tax rolls, and they're going to build a, a 11 to $16 million warehouse, 100-square-foot warehouse, which is going to come into the tax rolls, and they're asking for a, just a five-year uh, ingradiated uh, tax abatement agreement uh, in exchange for that. Uh, so it, it'll, this will result in 11 to $16 million of new construction being placed on the city tax rolls within five years um, where it, it never would have been otherwise. Thank you. So we're going to um, open it up at this point for the public hearing. Is there anyone here um, to speak for or against the adoption of this proposed tax abatement? Hi, Mayor. Hi, Commissioners. Uh, my name is Beverly Loftus with the Harlingen Economic Development Development Corporation, and I just wanted to speak in favor for the tax abatement. This is a Harlingen EDC project as well, um, and I appreciate your uh, consideration in, in approving the tax abatement. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else? Having no one else here to speak for or against, um, we will now close the public hearing. And so now, Mark. Do okay. No, so you did. That's it. We just need to just a discussion of possible action to approve the agreement, Mayor. Okay. So discussion and possible action to approve the property tax ag agreement with SOG Properties pursuant to the Texas Property Tax <coughs> Abatement Act, Texas Tax Tax Code Section three twelve. Do we have a motion to approve? Make the motion. motion. Okay. So we got a motion from Commissioner Lopez and a second from Frank. Commissioner Morales, um, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. And item 10, board appointments. Does anyone have board appointments? We'll start. Um, Commissioner Kinsley? Commissioner? None. None. Okay. Wonderful. Well, that concludes our, our meeting. Thank you all for your patience, and we are now adjourned. <laughs>